prompts do you use? Like what people are you following that you that you mainly get things from? Right. So the main ones I'm doing at the moment, I'm in a group on Facebook called Corona Art. So basically once a day the chap who runs it Adam does a little video and it's a it's a it's a word prompt. So today's was heart. So I actually mm -hmm. did a drawing of um hands doing a heart sort okay. of thing. Um I'm also in a weekly group called Prompt My Week, which again is a one day prompt. I'm in a group called Global Weekly Art Challenge, which is a free word prompt. So each week they'll give free words and sometimes they're connected, sometimes they're not. Um but before that I did loads of prompts from base uh, from Instagram. So I've done Inktober a few years, but I've tried to always done those with proper ink rather than digital. Um in October there's loads of um Halloween themed ones. Right, those are always um, fun. <laughs> then you've got your Christmassy ones at Christmas. Um and then there's other ones you can get. So um I also took part in a three hundred and sixty five day challenge a couple of years ago, which is basically a prompt a day for, for a mm -hmm. year. But although I kept up, the people running it kind of waned off, which was a bit of a the shame. The people running it, <laughs> yeah, they were like, "It's yeah. too hard to come up with the ideas." <laughs> I think they just they just got a bit of thing. But then th there's loads of themed ones. So there's things like Mermaid in in, in May. There's um, June Tune and Tune June, which are the similar things but slightly different slants on it. Yeah. You've got um, there was 31 Days of Harry Potter. There was random hybrids, that sort of thing. But this year, I've done less of the the thirty odd day challenge ones and done more of just the the corona and that. But then on top of that, I've I started because um with the with the pandemic over here, some because we're a small company, quite a few of us have been furloughed on and off part of the year. Mm -hmm. Never lost any income, but it's just oh, about good. getting income into the work sort of thing. And the first lockdown, I was like, right. I can't just sit here and do nothing. So I thought, right, I'll, I'll sign up some courses. So I've been doing a graphic design course on Udemy. It's just something I've always been interested in. Okay. Um, and that literally is telling you all the foundations of Photoshop, Illustrator. It'll be in design after that. On the back of that, I've done a couple of logo challenges to put into practice what I've learned. So I've done daily logo challenge, which was 50 prompts for 50 days in a row, and then logo call, which is 30 prompts for a row. Yeah. Logo call was very prescriptive. It was a pretend client brief. So, hi, I'm such and such. I'm running such and such company. I want this kind of logo. Okay. And daily logo challenge was a do a logo that features a panda. Do a logo that features a hot air balloon. So, it's different types of thinking. One's very open and one's quite specific. Some of the specific ones even said it can only have two colors or it must have blue or gold or it must feature X, Y, and Z. So, it's just different ways of work into a more prescriptive brief versus a, a more open one. Um, I've just started following somebody called Art With Flow on Patreon, and that's why I'm doing some of these more in-depth um, tutorials. And that was because somebody else had posted a tutorial they'd done, and I thought, oh, I quite like that. <laughs> it was literally to create a realistic burger. Yeah. Um, so I did that one. I've done loads since then, but this weekend I've done a burger, fries, and ketchup pot. I saw that. my own bat just to try and... Yeah, so the one that I posted on Instagram, I've actually improved since because I didn't like some of the the blur and the color. So I've I was going to say you had multiple versions of it on on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Purely for the fact that when I post, I was like, it's just it's just a bit it's a bit washed out. So I've got to try. So I'm now trying to tweak things and that. So I think the biggest thing now is I'm going for more quality over quantity. Right, because I'm going for things that will take a lot more depth and because I like the macaw took nearly three hours and nearly 8,000 brush strokes. That's kind of the level of depth I'm going into right. compared to some of the quicker ones might have been, you know, half an hour okay. minimal brush sort of thing. So I was actually just going to ask you how long you usually spend on some of these. And also you said the number, you're not, you're not actually counting the amount of brush. Like you're not sitting no, there no. going one, two, three. No, no. <laughs> um, it's something you have learned, but Procreate actually gives you statistics. So oh. there is a setting in Procreate where you can go in there. It will tell you how long you've worked on it, and it will be how long you've been active in it. So you might have done like half an hour each day for a week, but it will tell you you've done two and a half hours sort of thing. It's whatever you've been physically doing, Oh. and it will tell you how many brush strokes you've used while making it. I did not know that. Well, I, first of all, I, I only have an Android tablet, so I run into so many yeah, yeah. people that use Procreate, and I'm like, make it cross-platform for crying out loud. I 